Hi, my name is Katherine Gomes. I am the author of Apology of Math, and in this video, I'm going to be giving you an overview of level three. So level three is traditionally for third grade students, although obviously as the parent, you know what level is best for your kid. So um, in the program, you're gonna need two books. The Spiral Bound book is for your child. It's an all-in-one that they write in, so it has the lessons and they actually do the activities on the page. And then there is an answer key teaching guide, which has all the answers, as well as notes to you about how to most effectively teach math. And there also are tear out pages in this book. In addition to purchasing those two books, you will need um, some items for the activities. Now, a lot of these items are common household items, and we have a complete list in the back of the teaching guide but there's a few that are specific math manipulatives, and I'm just gonna show you those so you have an idea of what you might need to purchase. So the first one is linking cubes, and you're gonna notice that if you use uh, level one and level two of Apology of Math, I repeat several of the manipulatives so that you don't have to keep buying new things each year. So linking cubes, base 10 blocks, those are like this, unit cubes, 10 rods, flat, so base 10 blocks. Pattern blocks, those are these guys, I love these guys. And then there's one manipulative that's new for this level and you will use this in levels four, level five, probably level six, and that's fraction tiles. So these are really simple, there's like a tile for one. And then there's tiles that are part of that. So this is one fourth, okay? You can print these and do a paper version, but um, they're really affordable, so I think it's worth it. All right, well, let's take a look inside the books. So this is the student book, and to start, I just wanna show you a typical lesson to give you a feel for how the program works. So we're gonna look at lesson 19 here. We'll hold this up for a second. So in this lesson, kids are um, learning about multiplication. It's pretty early in their introduction to multiplication, and they're gonna learn how to multiply using the number line. So the lesson starts with an activity. These activities are hands-on, they're fun. I put them in to pique the kids' interest and to give them a concrete introduction to the ideas. So in this activity, they create a bead necklace that helps them uh, skip count. So that's the activity. And then after the activity, there's the lesson portion where I introduce new vocabulary and I show examples. And then they have their practice where they will actually write right on this page to do these problems. You can see it continues on this page and then it goes to the next lesson. And then um, the teaching guide answer key, here is the same lesson. So we did thumbnails and we put the answers right there for you. I actually have my child check his own answers um, to save time. You'll also notice that I have lots of notes to you about how to teach this effectively, what's most important. Um, the idea is I try to take my experience and, and everything that I've learned and just give you a quick snippet of like, here, you know, here's how you can make this um, effective for your child. And then that lesson has the other page here. Okay, so that's how a lesson works. And um, the only other thing they would do in that day is the skills practice. And I'm gonna show that in a little bit. Um, so they would do that lesson and then the skills practice. Now let me show you sort of what all is covered in this book. So in the table of contents, unit one is addition and subtraction up to a thousand. Then we do multiplication. Then we go to division. Then we actually take a little break from that and do data and measurement because I wanted to sort of break it up because it can be a lot for kids. And then after data and measurement, the kids come back and do more multiplication and division. This is with larger numbers. And then we have fractions. And then we end with geometry. Now let me flip through so you can get kind of a sampling 
or a little bit of overview of what it looks like. So unit one is addition and subtraction up to a thousand. This unit does have review from second grade of place value, but I also enrich those topics. So there's nothing really new in this unit, but we do go a little deeper. And um, I also like to have a unit that doesn't have a whole lot of new material because most kids forget things over the summer or they can just really uh, benefit from a bit of an overlap. I do wanna say the science connection in this book is flying creatures. Um, that's why there's a butterfly on the cover. Every book has a science connection and I had a lot of fun um, tying in the math problems to different flying creatures in creation. All right, so they've got estimation, adding, regrouping. I'm kind of skipping through here, subtraction. There's lots of games that they're playing, word problems. And then we get to the next unit, which is multiplication. So unit two is multiplication. And for the whole first chapter of that unit, I'm really carefully and intentionally introducing multiplication through different representations. That was so fun for me. It's a big leap for kids to go from addition to multiplication. So I did a lot of research and I had fun thinking of like all the different ways that they could picture multiplication, whether it's an array or jumps on a number line. We look at it a lot of different ways and that is so important for kids to learn a concept from like a lot of different angles, if you will. It helps them really retain it. And then, of course, I am introducing the abstract notation, the multiplication sign, vocab words like product. Try to keep really fun with coloring pages. And after we've introduced the concept, then we do a whole chapter on facts and practice where um, they're doing different activities, but really we're just starting the process of memorizing the answers with lots of practice. And it's not all of them. It's uh, twos, fives, tens, threes, and fours. So the easiest groups, and we'll come back later to do sixes, sevens, eights, and nines. Unit three is division. And one thing I was super intentional about is I mirrored this off of the unit of multiplication because multiplication and division are related. And it's very important that kids see that. So, um, you know, in um, the multiplication, here's one example. In the multiplication unit, we jumped up on the number line. In the division one, we're gonna jump back, okay? Just to help kids see that relationship. Bar models here. Um, we did arrays for multiplication. You can use arrays for division. You just look at the rows and the columns uh, to get your answer. All right, do you see how I'm showing that inverse? Of course, we still have fun coloring pages. And then the same thing. I did the concept for a chapter, and now we're going to do the facts for a chapter. And it is the inverse of what we did before. So since we did fours multiplication facts, we'll do fours division facts. We did twos multiplication facts, we'll do twos division facts. And we do these fun houses to show really emphasize that it's related. So that is a lot for kids. It really pushes them. Um, they do a poster at the end of that unit. And then we do data and measurement just to take sort of a break from the multiplication and the division. Data and measurement is always so much fun. Graphs, reading these graphs, <laughs> fun activities. These are always actually one of my favorite um, units to write. I had put a fun um, science experiment in here. My family had fun doing that one. Okay, so all kinds of data and measurement. And then more multiplication and division. So we're just continuing on, but now we're looking at sixes, sevens, right? Some of those trickier ones word problems, and then we're going to do it with division too, dividing by seven. 
So we work all the way up through all the facts within 10 times 10, okay? That's the goal. The next uh, unit, unit six, is fractions. So we're starting to really uh, grow that fraction concept for kids. Um, how to represent parts of a whole. And again, we're showing them in different ways. Um, parts of a group, parts of one whole. We show it with circles, we show it with rectangles, we show it with triangles, we show it with pattern blocks. That's so important. The more different ways that kids can picture a math concept, the better they understand it. A number line. Of course, we have to have some codes. Equivalent fractions. And then the last unit in this book is geometry. And we have a chapter on perimeter and area. Uh, so, so fun because this just connects so easily with their new multiplication skills when we do area. So perimeter first, but then when we do area, it's just such a great reinforcement of the multiplication that they were learning as they find the areas of rectangles. Here they're using the linking cubes to do that. Area and perimeter is really rich. It can get really fun and, and, and challenging in a good way. And then polygons. What is a polygon? And we're starting to get into some of the richer geometric ideas, like properties of polygons, angles. I taught, I was teaching high school geometry while working on some of this. So of course I didn't put high school level, but I know which concepts to really hit, right? Cause I've, I've taught the high school level and I'm trying to make your, your child's math future easy for them by covering some of these concepts in a fun way at this level. So they'll be so prepared for the math to come. Circles, a final project, and then congratulations. All right, now um, briefly, let me show you what's in the teaching guide answer key so you have a sense of what's in this book and what's in this book. So this book, the easy way to remember is you need both books, two books. This is your kid's book, everything they need. This is your book, everything you need. All right, why did I write a book for you? Well, I'm gonna show you. There's several tools in here that I, my editor and I worked really hard to put together to make your life as easy as possible. I love math and I love teaching math, so I wanted to take the burden off of you. All right, this right here is pure gold. This is my favorite part of my teaching guide. Uh, I wrote this program, I still look at this every day. So it's a pacing guide, a suggested schedule, okay? We did a four day week and we just laid out the lessons for you with a checkbox. And this is just so helpful to me um, at a glance to just see where we're at and not keep trying to remember like how many lessons are there and how many units and, and that type of thing. You'll also notice on here that with each day, there's a skills practice listed. So this is the lesson that you're going to do in the student book that I showed you. There's also some type of math skill that you're gonna spend five to 10 minutes practicing. And um, this is laid out specifically, I'll show you in a second, but that's what this part is here, okay? So you do a lesson and the skills practice. Um, another important thing to know is in the back of the teaching guide are tear out pages. So anything that your child's gonna like cut apart or like the game boards where I thought it would be easier to have it lay flat, really flat, um, are available in the back here and you tear them out. We also have them to print on the book extra site in case you want an extra copy or you didn't want to tear it out, okay? All right, so that's what's in the front and the back. <laughs> what's in the center of the book? Well, um, I explain the skills practice in detail, giving you lots of specifics. And then each unit, uh, I give you a snapshot of the supplies you'll need. And then I also tell you exactly how to do the skills practice for that unit. So if you're on adding two digit numbers, I have all these different ways that you can practice. So you take five to 10 minutes a day, but what you do is up to you, all right? You can decide if you wanna play the game or you just wanna do a note card, that's up to you.
And then of course we have all the notes on the lessons, all the answers, all of that throughout here. Okay. Uh, finally, I did wanna just show you the last page of this book is your complete supply list. So what I did um, in August, I think it was, is I tore this out and I go to like the dollar store and Target and I do a big run and I had this with me and I could just quick like, oh yeah, I need cupcake liners. Let me just grab those now. Um, or you can just look at this um, at the beginning of the year to kind of get an idea of what you need so you're not caught off guard. All right, that's the level three overview.